Campi Flegre is one of the world's most dangerous supervolcanoes that few people know about, and it's located just outside of Naples in Italy, an area with over six million people living within its reach. This volcano has been dormant for thousands of years, but scientists say there are signs that it's starting to wake up again. The Italian government has already started to plan for evacuations, so how do they evacuate over three million people? How destructive would such an eruption be? And what is Campi Flegre? That's what we'll explain today. First of all, what is a supervolcano? Well, it's not really a separate type of volcano, but rather a term for any volcano capable of producing extremely large eruptions. There are about 1,200 of these volcanoes around the world, and their eruptions have the potential to destroy entire cities or even affect global climate. Examples of famous supervolcanoes include Yellowstone in the US, Toba in Indonesia, and Pinatubo in the Philippines. Now let's look at Campi Flegre. Its name means burning fields in Latin, which originates from the Greek myth of Ixion and how he was burned alive in this very spot by Zeus after he tried to assault the god Apollo. Campi Flegre actually consists of many overlapping craters near the city of Naples, but the main crater is called the Caldera. This caldera is 13 kilometers wide and 300 meters deep. However, it's not just one single crater, but actually three craters that merge together. These three craters are the Astrona Volcano Crater, the Monte Epomeo Crater, and the Tuf de Vico Crater. The first historical record we have of the Campi Flegre supervolcano dates back to the time of the Roman Empire. According to Pliny the Younger, who wrote a letter to the Roman Emperor Trajan, there was a volcanic eruption in the Bay of Naples around 79 AD. And if you remember, 79 AD is also when Mount Vesuvius erupted and destroyed Pompeii. He described how ships were sailing on the caldera while the water boiled, and how fish were jumping out of the water because the sea had become hot. But according to Pliny, this wasn't an explosive eruption. Instead, the sea level rose 20 meters and then collapsed again a few hours later. We know now that Campi Flegrai had a major eruption before 79 AD because geologists found a layer of ash 20 centimeters thick in the soil of Herculaneum, which is a town near Pompeii. We also know that the eruption didn't happen at the same time as the eruption of Mount Vesuvius because the pumice deposits show that the eruption happened about 2,000 years before the destruction of Pompeii. This is confirmed by radiocarbon dating. It's still debated whether or not there was one big eruption or many smaller ones. In 1980, an Italian geologist named Mario Tozzi claimed that the pre-79 AD eruption actually consisted of seven smaller eruptions. But there is no consensus on this among other scientists. Another question that is still debated is how high the eruption column reached. This is the cloud of gas and debris ejected during an eruption. For the Campi Flegre, the estimated height varies between 30 and 50 kilometers. To put the size of the Campi Flegre supervolcano into perspective, we can compare it to the much better known Vesuvius. Vesuvius is 40 kilometers away from the Campi Flegre caldera. While both are active volcanoes, Vesuvius is considered a stratovolcano, which is formed by layers of lava and ash and has steep slopes. On the other hand, the Campi Flegre caldera has almost flat terrain and is 20 times larger than Vesuvius. It's sometimes said that the area around the Bay of Naples is sitting on a volcano, but that's not entirely true. The area is actually sitting on a caldera, which is the crater left behind after a large explosion. The Campi Flegre supervolcano is considered potentially active because it still poses a threat to people living nearby. The last eruption happened around 3,900 years ago, and scientists are now worried because there are signs that it might erupt again. Scientists monitor the level of the groundwater below the surface of the caldera. When the water level drops, it means magma is being withdrawn from the reservoir, and recently the water level dropped unexpectedly. There are several ways this supervolcano could erupt. It could erupt explosively, emitting huge amounts of ash and gases, or effusively with lava flows, or it could erupt phreatomagmatically, meaning with steam explosions. The latter happens when magma comes into contact with seawater. 
This type of eruption is particularly dangerous because the magma is rapidly turned into steam, which can cause violent explosions. The energy released can be up to ten times greater than a normal volcanic eruption. Also, this type of eruption can start suddenly without any warning. When the Campi Flegre erupts, the effects will depend on the type of eruption. A phreatic eruption would send steam and volcanic debris across the Bay of Naples. An explosive eruption would cover southern Italy in ash and lava. An effusive eruption would probably take place under the sea and may not have many immediate effects. But the lava would eventually solidify and could create new islands. Let's focus on the most dangerous scenario, a phreatomagmatic eruption. Studies published in 2021 estimate that if Campi Flegre were to erupt today, it could be even more destructive than the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora in Indonesia, which is considered the deadliest eruption in recorded human history. Over 100,000 people lost their lives. The Campi Flegre supervolcano lies only 10 kilometers from the city center of Naples, and although the epicenter of the eruption would probably be in the sea, Naples and the entire Bay of Naples would need to be evacuated. The pyroclastic flows would race down the slopes, reaching the densely populated coastal areas within minutes. In fact, a simulation study published in 2020 suggests that the eruption would generate deadly pyroclastic flows that would travel 15 kilometers from the epicenter at speeds of up to 190 kilometers per hour. These flows would reach the northeastern outskirts of Naples within 12 minutes and the city centre within 25 minutes. The high population density in this region means that many people would be affected, but this is just one part of the problem. Researchers also looked at the impact of tephra fallout, which is the solid material ejected during an eruption. Tephra can disrupt air traffic, damage buildings and cause serious health issues. Tephra particles less than two millimeters in diameter, can remain suspended in the air for days or weeks and be carried long distances by wind. This fine material is called ash, and it's especially dangerous because inhalation can cause serious health problems. In order to understand the extent of the potential disaster, researchers used the SIMI model to simulate how far the tephra would travel from the Campi Flegre supervolcano. The SIMI model uses meteorological data to calculate the transport and deposition of tephra. The researchers used hourly meteorological data for the period June to July 2018. This included variables such as wind speed and direction, temperature, humidity, and atmospheric pressure. They chose this period because it was similar to the meteorological conditions expected during the summer of 2021. This is important because hot and dry weather creates ideal conditions for the formation of thunderstorms, which could potentially carry volcanic ash even further. The simulation showed that if the Campi Flegre supervolcano erupted in July 2021, ash would have covered not only Italy, but also parts of France, Spain, Switzerland, Germany, Austria and Croatia. The thickness of the ash layer would depend on the distance from the volcano. At Naples, the ash layer could be up to 20 centimetres thick. In Rome, it would be between 2 and 10 centimetres. And in Madrid, it would be around 2 centimetres. The ash would consist mostly of fine material, which, as we mentioned earlier, is particularly dangerous to human health. Of course, the eruption wouldn't only have consequences for the people who live directly in the affected countries. Air travel would be disrupted over a large part of Europe. In fact, some airports would need to close for months due to the ash accumulation. The economic losses would be enormous, not only for the countries directly affected by the ash, but also for those whose economies rely on tourism. So what would this eruption be like in terms of the VEI, which is the Volcanic Explosivity Index? This index measures the relative magnitude of volcanic eruptions. It takes into account the volume of material ejected, the eruption duration, the maximum height of the eruption plume and the characteristics of the deposits. The VEI ranges from 0 to 8. The higher the number, the more powerful the eruption. Campi Flegre's eruption in 1538, which created the island of Santa Maria, would be rated 4 on this scale. 
If the volcano were to erupt with the same intensity as Tambora did in 1815, it would be rated 7 on the VEI. But if it were to erupt with the same power as the largest eruption in Earth's history, the 1883 Krakatoa eruption, it would be rated 8. Now let's get back to the original question of how 3 million people would be evacuated. According to a spokesperson for Italy's Civil Protection Department, an evacuation of this magnitude would be unprecedented in peacetime. The department has developed an evacuation plan for the Naples metropolitan area, but it was designed for a different kind of emergency, not a volcanic eruption. Still, this plan would serve as a basis if the Campi Flegre were to erupt. The plan includes setting up reception centers outside the affected area where people could go with their families and pets. The reception centers would offer basic services like food and water. The plan also includes making sure that public transport would keep running and that the evacuation wouldn't worsen the impact of the eruption. According to experts, the most effective way to evacuate the population would be to move them by car or train. People would be advised to bring along essential supplies, such as non-perishable food, water and medicines. The police would help coordinate the movement. But despite the plan, it's clear that an eruption would throw Italy into chaos. And so far there's no official risk map showing the exact areas that would need to be evacuated in case of an eruption. So this was Campi Flegre the sleeping giant of Europe. Do you think the chances of it erupting are high? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and check out our other videos.